Hi guys, this is Paul with Tom's Hardware, and today we're taking a look at the Micron 9100 NVMe SSD. This SSD is designed for enterprise deployments, so it's going to slot into a server using a standard PCIe 3.0 by 4 connection. It comes in two different form factors actually. We have a two and a half inch form factor that uses an SFF8639 connector and it is 15 millimeters thick. That is the Z height, standard two and a half inch form factor. This connector provides the exact same PCIe 3.0 by four connection, except that allows you to slot this into the front of a server, just like any normal drive, which then in turn allows, allows you to service the drive or replace them as needed, uh, much easier than shutting down the server and replacing an add-in card form factor. Now, the only difference between these two models, they both come with the same capacity points and they both come with the same performance. The only difference is this one is going to require more airflow in order to keep it cool because deep inside of here, there's going to be a multiple layered PCB. There'll be more than one PCB layered on top of each other and it's a lot harder to dissipate that heat from this form factor. So it will require 450 linear feet a minute of airflow to cool this and 300 LFM to cool the, the add-in card. Other than that, that is literally the only difference between the two models. So the 9100 series, both the U.2, which that's what a two and a half inch SSD is also referred to as, is the U.2 version and the add-in card version both come in both Pro and Max SKUs. The Pro series provides the most storage. It offers you up to 3.2 terabytes of addressable storage while the max only gives you 2.4 terabytes as the maximum capacity. The max, however, provides much more performance and much more endurance, which is, of course, good for demanding workloads, and that's what we have here today is a 9100 max, the 2.4 terabyte capacity point. One of the first things we noticed when we first seen this card is it is an exact carbon copy of the Memblaze PBlaze 4 that we have here in the lab. We have tested the Memblaze SSDs and found them to be reliable and solid and they offer good performance characteristics. Memblaze is a Chinese company that caters to the Chinese hyperscalers. So they have quite a bit of experience. When we initially saw, uh, noticed the, the Micron product, we took some high-res photos at an event that Micron had, compared them to this, and sure enough, the components are exactly the same with the exception of the NAND. So Micron did reveal to us that in fact there is a partnership between the two companies. So the Memblaze PBlaze 4 uses Toshiba 15 nanometer MLC, while the Micron uses Micron 16 nanometer MLC. Of course Micron wants to use its own NAND because that way they can be more competitive on cost. So it's not just as simple as swapping out your, you know, from Toshiba to Micron NAND because Toshiba is Toggle NAND and Micron is Onfi. Onfi and Toggle are basically specifications that dictate a number of the parameters around a standardized interface and design principles of the NAND to communicate with the controller. And so there's quite a bit of work that goes into validation to make sure that that works correctly. So if we look at the 9100, it has a standard linear heat sink. You can see the, the channel here down the center, which allows air to flow in and out across the heat sink to take advantage of the linear airflow inside the server. The bracket has holes in it, which promotes smooth airflow through the server, and we're gonna pop it apart. It's important to note that I had to take a heat gun and remove several other fasteners in order to prepare this to just pop apart like this. So you have to be extremely careful if you don't know what you're doing. If you pull this off, these thermal pads have an adhesive quality. It will strip NAND packages from your board and not to mention void your warranty, of course. So these thermal packages allow the heat producing components to transfer that heat into the heat sink, which then dissipates it. So here we have the, the board. We have a total of 32 Micron 16 nanometer MLC packages. Each package has eight die, and each die is 128 gigabits. So that's 16 gigabytes per die for a total of 32, which gives us a raw capacity of roughly four terabytes on this single board. Of course, you can only use 2.4 
but that's in order to assure that it gives you plenty of speed. These capacitors right here, they flush any data that is inside of caches or buffers on the drive down to the NAND in the event of a host power loss. That way you're not going to lose any data because of a power loss. The DRAM here packages, you have a total of nine of them. That's because they're arranged in an ECC configuration. So there is some parity there in case a, a die were to fail. Now that is yet another difference between an enterprise and a client SSD is the fact that client SSDs will almost never have ECC protection for the DRAM. The DRAM typically, in most cases, is not used to cache user data. It simply holds LBA tables, which are essentially a map of an abstracted uh, FTL, which is your flash translation layer. The LBA table is an abstracted map of your data addresses underneath, and you could also go pretty far into that, uh, but we won't. This is a PMC controller. It is branded PMC, but it's noteworthy that Microsemi recently brought PMC. So these FlashTech NVMe 1032 controllers have been used in a number of SSDs from the Samsung XS 1715, HGS TSN 150, Techman XC 100s, the aforementioned Memblaze products, and others as well. I mean, it's a it's a pretty robust controller. PMC allows uh, the the vendor to adjust the firmware and at a very granular level, which gives each individual product quite a bit of differentiation between the various products. This PMC controller supports up to eight terabytes of NAND, so Micron does have some room for growth in the future with this. It has 16 channels, and each channel supports up to eight targets. Now, a target can be a NAND package. In the current configuration, each channel is only addressing two packages. So if you consider it could address up to eight, you can understand how this can hold, this board could hold a lot more storage or, well, a larger board rather. So that is a basic introduction to the 9100. And now let's go ahead and take a look at our performance results.